when team RRR fulfilled the dreams of millions of Indians. Hello and welcome viewers. You are watching the special presentation of Sunset TV. Sambad with your host Kruti Mishra. And joining us today on the show is a very special guest. Iconic filmmaker, scriptwriter and Rajya Sabha member, Mr. K.V. Vijayendra Prasad. So, welcome to Sunset TV and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for coming all the way from Delhi. So, pleasure is entirely ours. Mm. And before I talk about the global recognition for your film, sir, you've penned Bahubali series, you've penned RRR, you've penned Bajrangi Bhaijan. So, I want to know what does cinema mean to you? My livelihood. So, it can't be just that. Yeah, but I can earn money in so many ways. But what better way than this? You put a question, how? By taking our culture abroad, by making people recognize in our country what a great heritage we have and you must keep it up. And abroad, what a great culture India has. And they should look at our country, which is such a rich country. That's my basic uh, aim. And what better medium is there than movies? They leave such a great impression on a person who sees them. Sir, absolutely. The impression certainly of your movies that is indelible. Uh, but sir, the fact that Oscar, Golden Globe Trophy for RRR and sir, the recognition continues. A lot of people say that it has brought back the glory of Indian cinema. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Of course. Okay, that's a that's a very straightforward answer, sir. <laughs> so, sir, I'd also like to understand what inspires you, because I was reading your interviews. You say that I don't create stories; I steal stories. There are stories in Ramayana, there are stories in Mahabharat. How do you weave these stories and articulate them through your expressions? Okay, let me try to give you an example. You have been speaking very fluently in English for the past uh, five minutes. How many letters are there in English? 26. And you have been using them permutation and combination. But letters are the same. Yes. Is it not? Yes. So similarly, we have rich treasure in our uh, uh, mythologies and folklore. You know, incidentally, one day my son asked me, he said, Father, in which way our country is the richest in the world? I was starting to rack my brains. We have such a gold mines or silver mines or diamond mines. No, 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 I said, stories. No other culture can boast this so much of a vast uh, quantity of uh, stories. So I want to exploit them. I want to take the greatness of Indian stories throughout the world. So there are so many stories, you tap them. You're there. But sir, isn't that a very difficult task that these stories are there, but how do you express them in your own emotions? The toughest thing is to condition your mind to be of your child. You see, as you grow, you become cynical. Yes. You become practical. But for a child, everything is a wonder. If a bird flies, <gasps> that's how he looks at it. Yeah. For six oh, he looks at the terror. So you have to take your mind to the age of a young boy, child. When you look at everything and wonder, automatic it is there. Whole thing you, you, you are not recognizing because you become an elder person. You become cynical, you become practical. The toughest thing is to condition your mind to be a child. Absolutely. Uh, sir, a lot of time it is said that there is regional cinema, that is Indian cinema. But this one cinema, transcended the national boundaries and brought global recognition to us. Mm. How do you look at this entire debate of regional cinema, Indian cinema? I mean, there's nothing wrong when you call regional cinema, nothing wrong when you call Indian cinema. The context differs. Suppose a Tamil, in, a friend of Tamil says, our Tamil country, great movies. Immediately I will say, my Telugu is the best. Yes. Some Hindi person says, we Hindi are best. I will say, Telugu is best. Yes. But once we go out of the country, it becomes Indian movie, Indian cinema. This is when I say my language is best, I don't mean any enmity, it's a competitiveness. Unless you become competitive, you can't grow. Unless the competition is there, you can't grow. That should be there. 
as long we are confined within the boundaries of our country. But the moment you go out, the glory of the country is reflected in the success of a movie. Let it be any language. It be Tamil movie, Malayalam movie, Kannada movie, it doesn't matter. It brings glory to our country. So, sir, when your child, and I call RRR your child, when it brought uh, laurels to the country, mm. how did you feel? How was the experience? Actually, very happy. What else can be there? <laughs> sir, uh, Parliament of India and Rajya Sabha particularly discussed and of course uh, appreciated and admired and lauded the work of the entire team. In fact, uh, the Elephant Whispers as well and for yes. RRR as well. Sir, a very important point that Chairman of Rajya Sabha said. Mr. Jagdeep Dhankar said that this is the internationalization of Indian cinema. Your thoughts on that? I agree with him, 100 percent. See, from the very beginning, the international market is such a such a big market when compared to an Indian market. See, from America, a big picture releases in about 20 to 30 thousand screens. In the entire world, it is about 50 thousand screens. But we, 4 thousand screens only. So, so much is there to be conquered. We must aim for that. RR is the first stepping stone. By having this Aska, we have a foothold in Hollywood now. Just there is a little HR. That is up to other movie makers throughout India. We have several highly competitive, intelligent makers to push it wide, to open the floodgates for our Indian movie. So there are specific challenges that you foresee, and how do we address those challenges? Regarding what? So the internationalization of Indian cinema. There are two things. Technical and creative. Yes. Technically, we must be competent. We are almost reaching the level of Hollywood uh, technical. Is it? At the same time, because we have to cater to the Hollywood or international market, don't compromise with our narrativeness. We should be Indian specific. Don't dilute. Don't dilute our uh, Indianness in the stories. You know this. Is what Spielberg told uh, my son Rajamouli. So you have such a rich heritage of our Indian content. Don't dilute it. You stick to your stories. We want to see them. We have enough Western stories with us. Don't dilute the content of Indianness in your stories. That's what he believes, that's what I believe. Don't make any compromises. So another important uh, statement that was made on the floor of the parliament was uh, that India could be the hub of creative content. What more needs to be done for that? It's a vast subject, uh, Mr. Raj, vast subject, but immediately, I mean, there are several aspects to it, several aspects. Uh, we have to create all the great minds of a movie field, and they have to come together, create, and they should put their brains together, how we can exploit and export all our creative content to the Western world. It's not a one man's effort. And government must also step in to see what are the problems our movie industry is having and they should be addressed. So, sir, specifically what are the issues that you want the government to address? One thing regarding our workers. Unfortunately, the movie field got thousands and thousands of workers, specifically movie field. They are not organized. And because they are not organized, they are, being, they are not being recognized by the government under that category. So, they are not getting the benefits of this thing. Unfortunately, because they do not have regular work, in fact, they need the help more. And the person, say in a particular movie field, suppose he carries lights, you know, so that job only. He can't do any other job. It's all because he knows that job only. So, my earnest request to the government is recognize them, treat them on par with any other organized uh, labor union. Second is the copyright. You see, Western countries, they are so stringent in the copyright. Unfortunately, we are not. A bill is passed in the parliament in 2012. It is not still being enacted for so many. I do not want to go to the details, but still it is not has come into force. You see, we want to deal with the Western people. They are so particular about the copyright. I believe the remarks, they were, I mean, I was talking to with my son who was spending a lot, lot of time in Hollywood for the past several months. 
When the remark is constantly being passed, your law of copyright is not stringent. You are not enact, yeah, the law is there, but you are not putting it into force. These things can be urgently addressed by the government, one for the welfare of the workers, as for the copyright. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Those are very valid suggestions. But, sir, since we are here, the iconic place uh, where, which is the genesis of all these remarkable stories that would reverberate across centuries, I believe. Sir, I know that you're working on different films together. Tell us about the 370 script that you're working on. An Art issue which is very close to your heart, by the way. Yeah, Article 370? Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> uh, that's been hurting me a lot. Incidentally, I want to recollect one thing. Yes, sir. Um, I asked for a, wanted to pay my respects to Modi ji, asked for a time. He invited me to his house. It was about a 40 minutes short. I was pleasantly surprised. He was talking only about the glory of the country. How to bring the glory, how to enhance it, what all one can do. I was so much taken by that. And incidentally, I told him, sir, Modi ji, I have four desires, not as fulfilled, I mean, uh, what you call the exact word, four things that are almost impossible. In my lifetime, if I can see one, I thought I should be happy. You fulfill three, sir. He asked me with a smile, what are they? Article 370 application. Second thing, Ayo Chara Male. Third thing, Kashi Karidor. You fulfill three, sir. One more is the main, sir. He said, what is it? POK. When our flag will rise high in the POK, I'm sure in his time that also will be done. And you're already working on the script for yes. Article yes, 370? Yes, I'm writing, I'm writing the script on Article 370. How it uh, was a draconian law was passed by the parliament and how ultimately under the ages of Modi and Amit Shah it was uh, removed. The entire, uh, about 70, 75 years. I'm sure, sir, that is going to be a wonderful <laughs> cinematic experience. And of course, uh, since we're talking about a movie, we also need a sequel to RRRR, sir. Yeah, it's, it's in the it's Where in do the we process. expect that? <laughs> that you don't ask me, but soon. First of all, Rajmohan has got a commitment to do with the movie with Mahesh. As the movie is going on, I think that will also take place. So we talked about one aspect of your life, which is very important, of course, the movies. The other aspect, let's talk about Parliament. Now, it was in July 2022 that you get a call that you're being nominated by the President of India to the Upper House of Parliament. Tell us about that experience. Uh, on June, July 6th, I got a call from Santoshi. I don't remember, he said a Prime Minister office, a Prime Minister, I don't remember, but they want to give a responsibility to you. For that thing, you have to be in Delhi for some time. How did you take it up? Yes, sir, anything for our country. I'm ready to do it. Suddenly, next day around 2 o'clock, I got a phone call from a private number. I did pay them to the Prime Minister's office. Yes, sir. They asked me, is your Mr. Vijay Prasad? I said, yes. Um, Prime Minister wants to speak to you. <laughs> I could believe. And that Modi ji, he came on the line speaking in Hindi. I felt a little embarrassed to tell him that my Hindi is not fluent. After some time, I hesitated. I said, oh, it's all right. Then in fluent English was talking. I said, uh, we have been following your case, Mr. Vijayan Prasad. You are doing great things in movies. So, the President is pleased to uh, give you the post of uh, Raj Sabha. Will you take it? Of course, sir, with honor. And that's how it happened. Sir, you're a writer with several ideas, fantastic ideas. As a lawmaker, what are the changes that you want to see in your country? And what are the changes that, as a lawmaker, or what are the issues that you want to raise in Parliament? After I met Modi ji, I happened to go to Taj Mahal. I visited a beautiful place. I came out. I was waiting by the side of a taxi stand. A person is supposed to come and pick me up. Then Indian came. I don't know location exactly, but uh, they charged it. They wanted to charge 1,000 rupees. He paid 1,000 rupees, went in a taxi. Behind him, there's an American is there. Obviously, he knew the place the same place he wanted to go and he saw 1000 rupees being exchanged. He could hear that uh, 1000 also. The same place, he was asked to give 5000. In a broken Hindi, he was trying to argue with them. 
no sir, 5,000. Other person, 5,000. Other person, 5,000. The entire tax is time, 5,000. And you're obviously being cheated. Yes. You can't say, he has to go, he paid 5,000. All the while I've been hearing about the conversation, I got, red, I got angry, I asked them, why are you charging so much more money? They asked coolly, who are you, sir? I said, I'm an MP, Raj Sabha. Then they said, when your government is uh, cheating, why can't we cheat? I was taken aback. What do you mean your government is cheating? Now look at, sir, the entry fee. Indians 50 rupees, foreigners 1,050 rupees. You are charging 20 times more. You are charging even 5 times more. I didn't have an answer. And subsequently, I came to know that in several places, the discrimination is there. What kind of an impression it leaves on the foreigners about us? And what is our adage, Atidhi Devo Bhava? My guests you must treat us in God. But we are exploiting them, we are cheating them, we are robbing them. It's not nice, it's not fair. I want to move it to the parliament as early as possible. Second thing, voting is the hallmark of democracy. Right. The first, one of the hallmarks. Unfortunately, we are having 66, 67% of voting. Ideal should be 19%. If you introspect, what are the reasons? Apathy. Or what do I care when all persons are not good? Or inconvenience in voting. Because you are born somewhere, your author card is there, and you are sitting somewhere in the city. Right. It goes a lot of time, time and expense to go and come back. So for that, I want to give a suggestion. We are having roughly 95 crores of orders and 115 crores of smartphones. Right. So every person is a phone. So what I suggest to the government is link your Aadhaar card to the phone. The alter process for one month, for first to, say first to third year. In these 30 days, you will get a ring generated by the election commission with a peculiar ringtone for that alter process. It comes at odd times. It's not a peculiar, not a rhythmic uh, this thing. So the moment it comes, it will be wrong ring for about one minute. So it will catch your attention. You open it. Your constituency opens your eyes. All the candidates are there. You press whomever want to cast the vote. It asks for confirmation, reconfirmation. And subsequently, again, one more it comes. Why? Because you could have been influenced by some other person. Right. When you put the second time, same thing also. It's confirmed. All the information is erased from your phone. It's not there at all. Only the election commission has the information. Nobody can pry into your phone, open your phone and find whom you have voted. So your confidence is kept. And by this thing, what happens? The influence of money gets minimized. Now, what happens when you know that next day the polling dot, they drum up all the, they put up all the people, they drum up, they, they put the influence, I mean, bring the facts of caste, or religion, language, all these things, and they give you alcohol, they give you money. But you see, the influence of alcohol, the influence of money gets reduced as the time goes by. So the election candidate doesn't know when it's going to be voted, he has to keep on continuously giving alcohol. It's human impossible. And all of a sudden he doesn't know whom he's voting for. Right. I, I don't see it gets, I mean, eradicated, the influence gets reduced and expenditure is minimal. The last is you put alternative voting motion for each and every panchayat. If anybody who doesn't have a phone, it will not be in one percent, they can go and cast their vote there. And they should stick to it also. In spite of doing all these things, if a person doesn't owe it, in spite of all these things. If an income tax payee has to pay 10% extra for that year, is a salaried person, one month salary cut, is a pension, one month pension cut, is a white card holder, no rations. So the first thing, let me have 19% owed. This also I want to recommend to the government. Fantastic idea for... Uh of course, for the progress of our nation, sir. But certainly, sir, as a representative of Sunset TV, as an Indian, we are all very, very thankful to you, sir, for bringing us that laurel. And thank you so much for talking to Sunset TV and thank you so much for sharing your experiences. 
Well, viewers, that's all we had for you in this edition. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to Sunset TV. Goodbye for now from my side.